Hey y'all, Nico here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thanks for joining me. I'm Nico. Today's yoga sequence is created for basketball players or for anyone who wants to receive some of the benefits that this practice can give to your body. Basketball is a fast paced sport that requires endurance, balance, body control, and explosive movement. It also requires concentration, safer shooting free throws, quick decision making for making plays and breath control from all the running and physical activity you're doing, doing during the game. So yoga is a great way to improve these areas in your game and also increase your mobility as well as just provide your body with more range of motion. Yoga is a great way to maintain flexibility and maintain that mobility and range of motion in season or off season. So if you're practicing in season, maybe start to gear yourself more towards restorative practices, nothing that will make you susceptible to injury. And during the off season, you can do more of the heat building and tougher practices just to help you maintain some of the strength you get from weight training and also keeping your balance in addition to uh, keeping your mobility as well. So maintaining a regular yoga practice will just help up your game, but it'll also help you to improve your recovery time as well as prevent injuries. So during this practice, we're going to focus on balance, strength, and mobility. So we'll be doing things to strengthen our core, doing things to open up our shoulders and our hips and increase range of motion and mobility in our back and other areas as well. So so let's begin with a couple breaths and a little bit of a warm up. Just come to a comfortable seated position. You can have your legs crossed. If you need um, some elevation, grab a block, or if you have a um, rolled up towel or a blanket that can act as a block as well. Also a nice thick book. So go ahead and grab that because we're gonna use it throughout the practice as well. And then if you need some elevation in your easy seat, you can just take your block or blanket or whatever you have and bring it up underneath your hips. So go ahead and close your eyes down. And take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale again. Exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Releasing any control over the breath and coming back to your natural breath. And you can use this time to set an affirmation or an intention. It can be for your practice. It could be for your day. It can be for the next game you know you're gonna play. And those statements may start with, I am, I will, or I choose. So then on your next inhale, just begin to slowly rotate your head to the right side, inhaling back and exhaling forward. Slowly moving with your breath. Let's do one more time to the right. And move to the left, same thing. Inhale back, exhale forward. Just trying to make sure you're maintaining your tall straight back here. And remember, bring um, something underneath the hips if you need that help to open your hips up. Bring your head back to a neutral position. Let's inhale the arms up, interlacing the fingers above you as you press your palms towards the ceiling. 
Exhale, release the hands and begin to twist to your right side. Your left hand will come on the outside of your right knee. Your right fingertips will face the back wall. You can just bring your gaze over your right shoulder. Inhale, come up to center. Interlace the fingers, push the palms away. Exhale, twist to the left. Right hand on the outside of the left knee. Left fingertips face the back wall, gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale. Exhale back to center. We'll come up on hands and knees in a table position. Bringing our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees underneath our hips. Go ahead and rotate the eyes of the elbows forward. And we'll just do a little bit of cat-cow. So inhale the chin, put the tailbone upward. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the tailbone under, bring the chin down to the chest. Moving in and out of cat cow with your breath. You can also do this from a seated position with the hands resting on the knees if this um, bothers your knees or anything like that. This is a great way to start to warm up the back. Warming up the spine. Let's do one more round of cat cow. Come back to a neutral position. Tuck the toes under and we'll begin to lift our hips up and back, coming to down dog. Lifting our hips up and back. Flipping our tailbone up and pressing it away. Now, if you are far forward like this in a plank or your back is rounded, go ahead and bend your knees a little bit and push through the arms. We want to worry more about lengthening our spine than having straight legs or letting our heels touch the ground. And you can alternate bending each knee, feeling a hamstring stretch here. And begin to bring your gaze up in between your hands. And you're just going to slowly walk your feet up behind your hands. Should feel a good hamstring stretch here too. From here, go ahead and bring a deep bend into your knees. Bring your chin down to your chest. Roll up to a standing position. Go ahead and bring those arms with you as you inhale. Exhale the hands to heart center. Lovely. We are going to take our right leg and cross it over our left leg. Coming to a forward fold this way. Sweep your arms up, inhale. Exhale, swan dive down to a forward fold. Now don't worry if your fingers don't touch the ground all the way. Go ahead and grab your block. If you have a chair, you can even place your hands on the chair. You can grab your elbows here. Should feel a really good hamstring stretch on that left side. Sometimes when you're running up and down the court and your feet are just pounding onto the floor, it can have an effect on your hamstrings, making those hamstrings tight. It might cause some sciatic pain. And then if you like, you can even walk your hands over to the right side. And then over to the left side. I really like this stretch because I get some sciatic pain every now and then from running. Go back to center. Let's switch the orientation of our legs so you can roll back up to standing. 
and cross the left leg over the right. Inhale up. Exhale, swan dive down to forward fold again. Remember, grab the block if you need it. Place your hands on a chair. Whatever you need to do. Just making sure you protect yourself throughout the practice. I know that basketball is a competition sport, but in yoga, we wanna try to let go of the competition mindset and only worry about ourselves and what's right for our body. Let's walk our hands over to the right. And over to the left. And protecting your body means coming out of any poses that don't feel right. So if something doesn't feel right, if it's hurting too much, if it feel like it's about to pull, then just release that pose. Uncross the legs. Let's roll back up to standing again. Inhale. Exhale this time, release the hands, interlace the fingers behind you. Roll those shoulders down and back, opening the chest. Bring a slight bend into your knees. Just a tiny bit, and we're going to fold over our legs, letting those arms fall behind us, getting a nice shoulder stretch here. And of course, you need nice mobile shoulders in basketball. For dribbling the basketball, for shooting the basketball. Maybe after a couple breaths, you'll feel your body start to loosen and you could come a little bit deeper. Inhale, exhale, release the shoulders. Roll back up to standing, arms come with you. Inhale. Exhale, the hands to heart center. Okay, from here, we are going to step back with our left foot. Right toes will face the front of your mat. Left foot is either at a 45 degree angle or parallel to the back of your mat. So just feel what works for you. And we wanna draw, draw a nice line from the front heel to the inside arch of the back foot. Sometimes people are even heel to heel drawing their line. So just figure out what feels good for you. Take your arms, extend them out from your shoulders and we'll bend into this front knee, coming to warrior two. Making sure this knee is nice and aligned over our ankle. Good, from here we will move into extended side angle. So flip your front palm upward, bring your forearm above your knee and extend your left arm up towards the sky. If you're comfortable here, go ahead and bring your hand down on the outside of your right foot. Now you can grab your block here Give yourself some elevation. Left arm extends up because we're gonna move into another pose from here. So if you know you're gonna need your block, if you have a block in extended side angle, go ahead and bring one on the inside of this foot as well because we are going to switch to revolve crescent lunge. So take an inhale here in extended side angle. Exhale, lower this left hand down on the inside of the foot. Come up on the back toe and extend your right arm up towards the sky. Again, use the block if you need it. I'm gonna get rid of it. And this is great for increasing our back mobility. Inhale, exhale, lower the right hand down, lower that back heel down again, extend that left arm up. Inhale, exhale, lower that left hand down, come up on that back toe again. Extend that right arm up. Good, inhale here. Exhale, lower the right hand back down. Lower the back heel down. We're gonna sweep both arms up and straighten the front knee. From here, we'll come down to pyramid pose. So take an inhale, exhale, lower down. Keeping that front leg straight or having a slight bend. You can also keep those blocks there and use those blocks. Your blocks or your two books or whatever you have. 
Great hamstring stretch here as well. Inhale, exhale, bend into the front knee. We're gonna come into a plank position. So there's a hand on either side of the foot. We step back to plank and we'll move through our vinyasa. So take an inhale here in your plank. Exhale, we'll lower down halfway, bringing our elbows to a 90 degree angle. Inhale, come up to up dog. So we're straightening those elbows out, shoulders relax, top of the feet are flat, engage the thighs a little bit to protect the lower back. Stretching our belly out here too, so if you wanna shift your weight from one hip to the other, you can. Inhale, exhale back to down dog. Remember to bring and bend in your knees if you need to. If you need a break from your down dog, drop down to your knees, extend your arms out, come into puppy pose. Uh, take one more breath here. Inhale, exhale. Bring your gaze up in between your hands. Walk those feet one at a time, up behind the hands. My body is already warm. I was so cold when I started because it's freezing in the Midwest right now, but I'm warming up. So hopefully you are too. Bring a bend into the knees, roll up to a standing position. Inhale, exhale the hands to heart center. Good, this time we're stepping back with our right foot. Remember to make that line, pick an angle for your back foot, bend it to the front knee, arms out wide. Make sure you check the alignment of your arms here. Making sure that comes straight out from the shoulders, but that our shoulders are relaxed. Let's move into extended side angle. Put the front palm upward, rest it on the rest of the forearm above the knee. Right arm extends up. Now, grab your block if you need to. Come down. Inhale. Exhale, lower the right hand down. Come up on the back toe. Extend the left arm up. Inhale. Exhale, lower the left hand down. Back heel comes back down. Inhale, the right arm up. Exhale, lower the right hand down, back toe, inhale the left arm up. Exhale, lower the left hand down, back heel rotates down, straighten that front leg, inhale, exhale, lower down for pyramid pose. Grab your blocks if you need them. Inhale, exhale, bend it to the front knee. Coming to a lunge position, we'll step our left foot back, coming to plank. Move through your vinyasa. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower down, halfway. Inhale, up to up dog. Exhale, make your way back to down dog. Good. Take an inhale, extend this right leg back. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it in towards the chest. As you step that foot up in between your hands, rotate the back heel down, making that nice line, and we will come up to worry two. Same pose as before, making sure those arms are Aligned, shoulders are relaxed. Now I'm gonna scoot back a little bit because we're getting ready to move into warrior three. So take this left arm, swing it around to the front. And we're going to shift our weight into our right foot. Then we'll bring this left foot off the ground, come into warrior three. Go ahead and bring your hands to heart center, trying to bring your body parallel to the ground. And then from here, 
go ahead and bring a bend into your right knee cross this left ankle behind you and then inhale back up very slow and controlled if you need to grab onto something to help you balance a wall maybe a chair you can lower and lift nice and controlled one more time lower inhale exhale lift good inhale warrior three exhale lower those hands down come to a lunge position lowering that back foot down as well go ahead and lower the left knee down onto the ground back of the foot is flat I'm breathing heavy. Sweep the arms up, inhale. Low lunge here. Exhale, bring those hands back down on either side of the foot and we're going to begin to shift our weight back coming to half split. So let those right toes face the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lower down. If you need to have a slight bend in this front knee, feel free. It's not uh, completely necessary for your leg to be all the way straight. Remembering what I said earlier about working within your range, letting go of the ego. Take an inhale here in your half split. Exhale, shift your weight forward. Tuck that left toe under, coming off the left knee. Right foot comes back into plank. And we'll move through our vinyasa. You can always skip this too. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Take a breath or two. Take an inhale, lift the left leg back. Exhale. Knee comes into the chest. Step the foot up in between your hands. Come up to warrior two on this side. Good, inhale. Exhale, swing this hand around to the front. And, excuse me, and we'll shift our weight forward. Coming to warrior three. Let me step back a little bit. Hands could come to heart center. Remember to grab something if you need some support. Good, inhale, exhale, lower down. Right ankle comes behind the left knee. Now inhale up, exhale down, nice and controlled. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale. Exhale, lower down. Almost didn't make it, but <laughs> over here. Go ahead and lower this back knee down. Sweep those arms up, inhale. Exhale, bring a hand down on either side of the foot. Inhale here. Exhale, shift your weight back. Left toes face the ceiling. Inhale to lengthen your spine. Exhale, lower down, just until you feel something in that hamstring. Take an inhale here in your half split. Exhale, shift that weight back forward. Step this, I'm sorry, tuck this back toe under. Lift the knee off the ground. We're gonna move through our vinyasa first. Step this left foot back now. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower down for chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, make your way back to down dog. Taking a breath or two. Inhale. Exhale. 
drop down to those knees bring the big toes together we're going to shift our weight back towards our heels as we come to child's pose now if you need elevation block blanket or a pillow comes underneath as you melt the chest down for child's pose but if you don't need it then just set it to the side just another great lower back stretch forehead chin or cheek could come down to the mat as you just melt your heart down knees are out wide here as well Go ahead and begin to shift your weight forward. Coming back to a tabletop position. Let's take our right foot and step it up in between our hands. And we will come to lizard pose. So you might have to extend that left knee back just a little bit. Hands come down on the inside of the right foot. If you need elevation, grab your block. Your hands can come up on the block on whichever side works for you whichever height. So go ahead and roll your right foot onto its side. Now, if you're comfortable here, you could come down lower onto the forearms, onto the block. Great hip stretch here. We want to keep our hips nice and flexible for those uh, explosive movements we talked about. Your hips are a part of your core as well, not just your abs. So one more inhale, exhale, release. Come back up on the hands. Now I'll give you a couple options here for this next pose. Option one, you're gonna scoot your body back towards the wall. Your left foot is gonna come onto the wall. Right, knee, right foot is still in front. And then you're coming up this way. Hands can rest on your right knee. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what body parts are called. So you can stay there. If you feel like you're feeling super confident, super flexible, Go ahead and bend that back knee away from the wall. Reach up and grab it with the left hand. Open the chest towards the sky. Should feel a nice quad stretch on that left side. Take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale, release. Step that right foot back. Let's do those same poses on the left side. Left foot steps up in between the hands. Now you can bring both hands on the inside of the left foot. So again, you might have to walk your foot out a little bit. Grab the block if you need to. Roll your foot onto its side. You can stay upright. You can stay on your blocks or you can lower down for a lizard. One more breath, inhale, exhale. Coming back up, bringing that foot back flat. Now, if you like, you can scoot up close to the wall, bringing that back foot up against the wall and coming up on the left knee, or reach around with the left arm. I grabbed the wrong one. Reach around with the left arm, gaze up towards the sky.
one more breath. Inhale. Exhale, release the foot. Bring those hands back down on either side. Step that left foot back. And now we're gonna shift our weight down to our belly. So, from here we will move into locust pose. So locust pose is going to help strengthen our shoulders and help with our posture. Because sometimes in basketball, you're dribbling, you're running, you're doing a lot of forward leaning. So we want to try to kind of correct our posture and keep those shoulders and back muscles nice and strong. So take the hands, bring them to your sides. Top of the hands are pressing into the mat. And then you want to roll those shoulders back, lifting the chest off of the ground, lifting the sternum. And then you want to start to lift the legs off as well. Kind of pressing into the tops of the hands or you can interlace the fingers behind you and pull away. One more inhale, exhale, release. Good. You can rest your forehead down, we'll just do it one more time. And let's get ready for our second round of locust pose. Tops of the hands pressing. Roll those shoulders back and away. Lift the sternum. Lift the legs. Trying to get those, the tops of those thighs up a little bit. One more inhale. Exhale, release. A tiny movement it looks like, but it's a lot of work. Take those hands, bring them underneath the shoulders, and we'll shift our weight back, coming to child's pose, just to counteract that back bend. So this time, go ahead and bring your knees close together. If you need something underneath your hips, you know what to do. And this time, let your arms relax down at your sides. And you'll just fall over those knees. Take one more breath here in your child's pose. Come back up to a neutral spine and bring your body to a seated position. We'll do a little bit of ab work and then a little bit of ab work and then we'll relax and move into our Shavasana, which is our final resting pose. So coming to a seated position, we'll take our feet, bring them out in front, so hands are behind you. Begin to lean your body back until you feel that core engage. You'll feel the, feel the spot when your core engages. You can press your core and feel those ab muscles, muscles working. <laughs> muscles, muscles working. So then take your feet, lift them off the ground. And now we're in boat pose. You will feel those abs engaging. We've been using our core the whole time, but now you extra feel it. You can stay here. One more breath, inhale, exhale, lower. And we're gonna do it a couple more times, but this time we're gonna attempt to add some movement. So you can keep the body still, or you can move with me. And coming back, back to the boat pose. You can keep your hands here for support. If you're feeling super comfortable, bring your arms around the front. This is a little bit of a balance challenge as well. And then we'll just lower down, inhale. Exhale, back up three times, two more times. Inhale, exhale, one more time. Inhale, exhale, good, lower. Just one more round of that and then we'll start to cool down. Good, now let's do our last round. Hands come at your sides. Again, if you're feeling confident, Bring your arms around, arms out in front. Inhale, exhale. 
inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale, exhale, good, go ahead and lower those feet down, hug the knees, just resting, catching our breath, and then we will begin to make our way down to our back. So feet are flat again. And just slowly roll down to your back. Let's get a hip stretch in figure four. So take your right ankle, cross it over your left knee, making sure that ankle clears the knee and that the right foot is flexed. Now, this might be enough for you, or you can take both hands, bring them behind the left thigh, pull it in towards your chest, getting that nice hip stretch on the right side. Stretching the hip, stretch along the IT band. Take an inhale, exhale, release. Uncross the ankle. This time, cross the left ankle over the right knee, making sure the ankle clears the knee and that the foot is flexed. Either staying here or let's grab behind the right thigh, pull it in towards our chest. the left ankle take the arms bring them out wide on either side of your body bring the elbows in line with the shoulders um, the arms are in the shape of a cactus here take your knees bring them up to a 90 degree angle and then we'll just take both knees let them fall to the right now if this is uncomfortable or if you need elevation under the knees Grab your block and bring it underneath the knees. Gaze can be straight up towards the ceiling or you can look over to the left. Inhale. Exhale, bring those knees back to center. This time, let both knees fall to the left. Up to the ceiling, you're looking over to the right. Another great way to get some mobility in the spine. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest, rocking side to side, giving that lower back one last release. Inhale, find stillness in the center, hug the knees in as tight as you can, lift the chin, hug the chin in, inhale, hold. Exhale, release the knees, let the feet extend towards the corners of your mat, let your Hands rest at your sides with your palms facing upward. Moving into our Shavasana or our final rest. Just giving our body a short amount of recovery time and giving ourselves some meditation time as well. So for today's Shavasana, we will do what is called Ujjayi breath, which is a oceanic breath. Breath that sounds like waves of the ocean, which activates your parasympathetic nervous system, just allowing you to relax. 
So for your ujjayi breath, as you inhale, just create some texture in the back of the throat as if you are attempting to make a snor snoring sound, but just doing it very lightly. And as you exhale, sigh out the breath loudly. Now for this next round, this time when you sigh out the breath, just keep your mouth closed. Let's inhale. Exhale. Staying with this breath for the next few moments. Just concentrating and focusing on effectively using your ujjayi breath. And as you breathe, you feel your body start to relax even further. You start to feel your body melt into the floor with each out breath. Take one last ujjayi breath. And begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Coming back into your body and back into the room. And when you're ready, just roll over onto your right side. Using your arm as a pillow here. Taking a moment to reflect on your practice and maybe to revisit the affirmation or intention you might have said at the beginning of class. And also just take your, take a moment here for some gratitude towards the self. For doing something good for your body and for practicing some self care today. And when you're ready, we will come up to a comfortable seated position Sweeping our arms up with an inhale. Exhale, float the hands down to heart center. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me for this basketball yoga practice. Let me know what you think of the practice. Let me know if you regularly practice yoga and how it helps you. Don't forget to like this video, share it with someone, and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching. Peace and love.